First of all, I would like to say what an absolute honor it is for me to be in Mexico today. I have a huge amount of respect for anybody who cooks or works in hospitality. As you all know, the job sucks. I mean, it sucks. Unless you absolutely love it. And if you love it, something magical happens. The long hours, hard days, chaos, shouting, and madness that is hospitality, it gets rid of anybody without pure passion. And the people that are left are special. A little bit weird, but special. Growing up in Canada and spending the last 15 years of my life in Asia, I know nothing, I knew nothing about Mexico. I mean nothing. The only thing I knew about Mexico was from television. So, mariachi, yeah, that's good. Well done, Mexico. Uh, the big mustaches, those are quite nice. The dangers of tequila, the agility of lucha libre, and nachos. Nachos. Nachos aren't even Mexican. I have come to find out that nachos, the only thing I bloody knew, is not even Mexican. So I wanted to learn the real Mexico. Lucky me, last year, when I was presenting at Madrid Fusion in Manila, I was lucky enough to meet Senor Eddie Warner. Now, me and Eddie, we just hit it off because we have one big thing in common. We both love food. Eddie was so passionate about the gastronomy and the culture of Mexico, and so proud of his country, he said, you know what, Kevin, if you really love food, you have to come to Mexico. Since that conversation, I have been dreaming about the stories that Eddie told me about. The ingredients, the unique, wonderful textures, and the fascinating, delicious comfort food. I knew I had to go. I had to get myself to Mexico. I had to get my ass to Mexico. That was the plan. So I contacted Eddie about six months ago, and Eddie and Raul Sauros, they made me a deal. They said, me and my wife come to Mexico for 21 days. We will meet the most spectacular people. We will eat the most delicious food, stay in the most unbelievable hotels, and get to see the most unique, overwhelmingly majestic locations. In exchange for all of this, I had to come here tonight and speak about my time in Mexico. I don't know, I told Raul. It seems like a lot of work. The drinking, the eating, the sleeping, I don't know, but you know what, as a personal favor to Raul and Eddie, okay, okay, I'll do it. So here it is, the incredibly difficult job of consuming Mexico. Mexico has been, more than anything else, delicious. What we never realized was that how different Mexico was inside of Mexico. San Miguel de Allende. We ate as much as we possibly could. We checked into Rosewood Hotel, we had breakfast at Campagno, we tried chilaquiles, my god chilaquiles, and we ate at a restaurant called Apari to discover the unique uses of amazing local ingredients. Puebla. Puebla was delicious. The first place we went was a Musea de Barroco. Now, that was unexpected, because it's a museum that also served food. Mm -hmm. 
Rosewood Hotel in Puebla is shocking. It's a dangerous place to check in because you're never gonna leave. One of the other restaurants we tried was called Moral de los Poblanos, or something similar when I don't say it correctly. What we ate was called Mole de Calderas. Caderas. Caderas? Caderas. I knew what it was, I knew how to order it, and I sure knew how to eat it. Unbelievable dish. Now, Agurio was unexpected. Agurio was a combination of traditional Mexican classic comfort food, specifically with the sauces that they make being all renditions of mole, with modern unique interpretations and cooking of protein. Round two. Third stop on the trip, Riviera Maya. Summarize, showtime. We checked into Grambella's Hotel, which is a massive hotel property that dominates the coast. It basically encompasses sand, ocean, and food all into one beautiful little lovely small package. We did Cirque du Soleil because, you know, it's Cirque du Soleil. We ended up having dinner, checking out a cocktail, and seeing a most amazing show. Stop number four, the Yucatan Peninsula. We were everywhere. The word that summarizes it best would be tradition. We sacrificed myself within a cenote, we found flamingos, and we ate every single thing we could possibly imagine. We were within the markets, we were running around trying to find unique ingredients to be able to continue to understand the magic of Mexico. But one thing that we were able to do is eat a slow cooked kind of young pig from underneath the earth. It was called Cuchinilla Pibil. And this is one of those preparations that I will hold dear to me for absolutely ever. Restaurant Cook was one of the standouts in the Yucatan region. What I loved about it was not only the creative and the talent and the innovation of what they were doing, what I loved about it is how each dish still paid homage and tradition, the traditional food of Mexico and the traditional food of the region. The feeling in the end of Mexico was very, very unique. Uh, it's very rare to go to a new country and have so many new experiences and still feel so comfortable throughout the entire experience. I think the fact that people absolutely love the tradition of what they do and the feeling of giving you something that they know is going to be delicious, that touches you. The people would smile from the streets to the children to the people that were you were bumping into as you walked by. People were very friendly but also very proud of being where they're from and then the traditions that they have. Mexico, you Mexicans, on the other hand, you not only have absolutely brilliant traditional food, but you've gone one step further and you've created regional cooking. From the Yucatan region to Oaxaca to Mexico City to you name it, it changes every time you go to a new place. Lucky you, Mexico, lucky you. Must be nice. Because I did not grow up in a country that has any traditional food culture, I naturally began incorporating flavors and techniques from all over the world. From the smoky, kind of charcoal barbecue flavors of Malaysia, to the deep, dark, earthy curries of India, you know, the spicy, sour, fresh salads of Thailand and the crunchy, uh, kind of aromatic, complex sambos of Indonesia. These are the memories that shape my cooking. Thank you, Mexico, for giving me so many amazing products.
thank you, Food and Travel, for allowing me to try so many fantastic textures and so much brilliant traditional comfort food. Thank you for giving me the greatest food experience of my entire life. I am sorry for what other countries do to your food. It's really not your fault. Before I go, one last thing. Congratulations to all tonight's nominees. I've been lucky enough to meet many of you, and not only are you talented, but you're incredibly beautiful people. Success is not about, it's not about how good you do. Success is about failing and finding reasons to continue when everybody else would bloody give up. Mexicans don't give up. That's why you keep winning. And that's why the world is starting to discover how amazing Mexico is. Queridos amigos mexicanos, I lived it and I bloody believe it. Arriba Mexico! Woo!